Oh, I should turn it around because we're getting close to the mysterious sound. Travel companions. I know. Right, I'll just go myself. I don't know what's going on. Oh, story for you. This was back in 2017. It was in the summer of 2017. Um, and actually, if I backtrack a little bit and talk about how we got to that point, um, it was, ooh, oh my gosh, no, I was fresh off of my fourth year of university. So I've been doing my research for quite a while, looking into all the different international summer programs that my school offered and um, I was actually super super interested in this one it was called witnessing Auschwitz um, and it's been running for a couple years now and the idea it was open to um, a wide range of um, majors and backgrounds of the university which is kind of why I was drawn to it um, because uh, with an English background like I didn't want to just do a strictly like English based research thing in London, <laughs> you know, like a typical thing. Um, not that there's anything wrong with London, um, but just I wanted to try something new. I wanted to go somewhere I've never been before. That was Poland. Um, and when I read their description for this course, it was looking at different representations of the Holocaust and also like um, learning about the history of the Holocaust and working with the top researchers in that field. I was like, yes, this is the one I want to do. Now, up until now, everything has been great all the my expectations and my checkbox have been fulfilled um but nothing absolutely none of my research would actually prepare me for what happened that summer actually no that's a lie all of my prior research from watching stupid reality tv shows um actually did prepare me a little bit for the stuff that's about to happen i've had a lot of time because it's now 2020 and we've been in quarantine for the past three months but i've, I've had a lot of time to think about and to process and to figure out what went wrong on this trip and I've sort of arrived at several different conclusions and I'll talk a little bit about what happened. Um, now I think this is at the core of a lot of the conflict and a lot of the issues that came up. I think people had a different expectation out of the course and our six weeks there than the professor did which is really weird because this class has run, this trip has run for several years before us um, and it's actually done really, really well. Um, and I think it's just, there's something with the personalities of our particular year that didn't mesh very well. Um, one of it being, this was like, I don't know, I'm like, I read things carefully and I go into things knowing what to expect based on the information I've given. Um, but I don't know why people don't. And I'm like, if you're going somewhere for six weeks, uh, you think you would put a little bit more effort into figuring out what this trip is going to be like. But the thing is, at bottom line, I think a lot of the folks who traveled with us, at least half of them, were expecting almost like a vacation. But this is not a vacation. It was very clear we were going on a research trip. We would be traveling sometimes under less than ideal um, conditions, and we would be staying in places that were not five-star and fancy, right? Um, but a lot of people seem to think that that's what they were getting into because there were a lot of the complaints that came out of the first few days when we were still in Warsaw was the idea that, oh, well, my friend went on this trip with our university and they went to Costa Rica and they were staying at five-star resorts and getting to go to the beach and having these great, like, beachside parties and barbecues and stuff like that. But I'm like, nowhere 
in the program description did it mention that we were here for vacation we were told this is not a luxury trip we were told to pack light we were told that certain places would be staying at would be a bit more run down um as are like you know a lot of like the older buildings in europe and i think from the professor side of things from the organizer she treated us like adults, which is completely fair because we were all over 19. Um, I mean, I certainly didn't have expectations to be baby. It was in a high school field trip. Certain things were organized. We had to make arrangements for ourselves otherwise. One first example being getting back from the airport because we weren't going on the same flight. Everyone was coming from different places. So the idea was then you just, we got the address of the first place we were staying at. Um, we could coordinate with each other and figure out folks who were arriving at the same time and get there together. But we didn't have to, right? You can go entirely on your own. Um, just to be on the safe side, I had coordinated with a couple of others um, saying, okay, we're going to meet together. We're all arriving around the same time. Let's get to a hotel together. Um, we got lost, which, you know, for me, that's not a big deal. I feel like I've come to accept that as part of traveling get lost everyone gets lost it's fine it's okay we'll figure it out together right but everyone just sort of freaked out everyone was immediately jumped to like panic mode um and i like, all we did was we got off one stop early so we had to walk a little bit more than originally intended but like not a big deal um but instead of like I don't know, like, I feel like I would understand it more if we were getting mad at each other, if we had gotten mad at each other, you know, like, oh, you told us to get off early, why didn't we? Like, it would still be petty and immature, but I think I would understand it a little bit more. But everyone pinned the blame on the professor and the program. They were saying, why can't you arrange a giant bus for all of us to get there together? Why can't you arrange all of this? Why is it up to us? We don't know the language, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, okay, come on, guys. Um, and like, as with all the other memos, um, people clearly didn't get the memo about traveling light. Uh, for those of you who've been to Europe, um, you're probably familiar that a lot of buildings don't necessarily come with um, elevators or escalators, or it's like there's one and it's really sh shabby and they're hard to find, right? Um, so the idea is like, you know, pack what you can carry, what you're comfortable carrying up and down stairs yourself. Um, and absolutely that, like nobody listened to that. Um, so we got to our first place, um, and this was probably the worst um, in terms of like amenities and building age and um, cleanliness and all of that. This was the worst place uh, we stayed at during the entire trip. Um, and there was reason we were staying at that building. Um, there was a lot of historical um, value in that building, and actually it was um, a location where a lot of Jewish people hid um, during the 1940s when they were rounding up folks for the concert, for the death camps, essentially. Um, so it, it's, it's a pretty powerful place and it has a lot of great significant meaning, but because of its age and because of like um, all that's happened to it, it's kind of run down. And then, I mean, the prices overnight, like if you looked it up, it was like 13 zloty or something per night, right? It was, um, we don't get our own rooms. We were all sharing rooms. We had three or four people to each room and there were no beds. Um, we were all sleeping on mattresses or like sofa beds that were turned over on the floor. Um, there were some rooms had like a tiny bathroom. And when I say tiny bathroom, it would be like a sink or like a shower and a sink but no toilet so you had to go use the communal bathroom on the hallway and it was co-ed so there was like you know some people freaked out about that or whatever um and then, you know like the floor was a little bit dirty and there were no elevators or stairs and some of it smelled like smoke because a lot of people smoked um so it was not like i admit it wasn't really a great place but it was kind of like i was expecting it because we were told um so it didn't really bother me that much but the minute we arrived there <sighs> It was a gong show. So that already sort of set the tone for the rest of the trip. So you, as you can imagine, as um, more difficulties sort of arose um, throughout the weeks or um, people were challenged with different things, um, essentially all the blame was lumped on the professor, um, which I felt like was kind of unfair. She was, um, she had her flaws and she had her issues and she could be kind of abrasive and dismissive. But at the same time, she's an older lady. She came from Eastern Europe. She's probably been through a lot in her lifetime and she's done a lot of extremely valuable research um, and you can tell this trip this research seminar is her like heart and blood and she constantly said you know I'm not your mother here I'm your professor I'm here for your academic questions and I'm here to help you with that but in terms of like 
have other things, you're gonna have to be an adult and deal with it, right? And another thing that people did not do was like, I mean, this is like nobody's fault. It was really cold in the beginning of May that year. It was freezing when we got to Warsaw. It actually started snowing at one point. So it's snowing right now, but you can't really tell. <laughs> it's only snowing. <laughs> I know, but it's not showing up on camera. <laughs> Believe me when I say it's snowing. Look, this is not dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> so people were like miserable and grumpy and they were like, I thought it was supposed to be summer weather, why is it so cold, blah 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 blah. And we couldn't even have class discussions anymore because the expectations clearly didn't line up with what was happening from both ends. Um, and it got to a point where I think like someone accused her of being anti-Semite and I'm like, we're on a course learning about the Holocaust. That's like the worst thing to accuse your professor of. And then, you know, prior to this trip, I honestly, every time I used to watch like America's Next Top Model or any of those reality shows where like 30 girls are stuck in her house together and forced to like get along as they compete for something, I was always like, okay, some of the drama must be manufactured. There must be like a mole or something. There can't be like this much chaos if you leave people to their own devices. And like, yes, you know, people have come out and said, yes, there's a lot of, um, and producer like the drama in these shows where you know they would create circumstances where people were stressed out um like depriving food and like keeping them up making them tired overworking and all those things um that would create an environment that's ripe for conflict um but at the same time i totally get it like people were at each other's throats like people who came in as friends they would have like a fight and i'll be like what happened suspect watching every move you make it I'll keep my guard up lie awake and now you cross that line I'm up all night I'm gonna sleep with one eye open. a lot of the paintings on these walls or the decorations were recovered from the ruins after World War II and re um, well essentially stuck back on the wall during the reconstruction in the 50s That now brings me to the second topic, the second major source of conflict throughout the summer. And this centers entirely around one participant who was actually kicked out of the program. I don't think she was in a place in her life where she was able to handle the stressful environment that we were living under. Um, and I think she has some great ideas and a lot of um, a really interesting background and a lot of personal connections and her research would have been great you know like she would have um i think this would theoretically be a good fit for her but just not at that point in her life because i think she was dealing with other things i think she had a bit of a drinking problem now the thing with alcohol in europe is we all drank a lot we all drank a lot um, i think i was drinking every single day we had wine at every dinner and beer was super cheap um, and of course, if you come in with a pre-existing drinking problem, that's not necessarily the most healthy environment for you. And none of us knew this, right? Um, she had some stuff she was going on. I know in the first couple of days already, she had like some you know, late night chats with the other, her roommates like talking about stuff that's upsetting her and stuff. Um, but my first time where I sort of had like conflict with her, um, where, where she was basically like, oh, I have weed. I want to boil it and make it into tea. You have a kettle in your suitcase. Can you dig it out and let me use it? And I was like, no, no, no. We have to be up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. because we're taking the train to the Auschwitz-Birkenau um, memorial site where we were going to actually stay for two weeks. 
Um, and like our policy for this trip was like, if you're late, you get left behind, right? And I was like, I, there's no way I'm gonna be late. I need to be up at five and we need to be going. So I was like, no, 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 it's, our, it's late. This is like 1 a.m. already, I'm going to bed. Like we're all, like our, the group, we were all like together and kind of chatting and having a beer or two. So like, no, no, we're going to bed. And she's like, no, 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 I want it. And I'm like, I don't want you to use it. Um, and just, especially cause I like my roommates, you know, were super sensitive and like slept early and stuff. So I was like, no, no, no it's already packed and ready to go. Like, no, we're not doing this. She started getting a little bit mad. <laughs> And she's like, if you, I'm not scared of your roommates. If you don't want to go dig through your suitcase for it, I will. And my original just like, well, I don't want you to go through my things either. You know, like, no, 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 this is no. Um, and she's like, and she's getting like more mad. She's like, no, I'm gonna go through. And then, you know, at that point, like one of my other friends had to step and be like, no, she said she was like, not comfortable with it. Like, let's call it quits. And she's like, okay, fine, I'm going out to get more alcohol. But at that point, like all our corner stores and everything in our vicinity were closed. And we're like, okay, um, are you sure? She's like, yeah, I'm an adult. No one can stop me. And actually another thing I should mention is we sort of have a curfew despite like, you know, we're us all being adults. Um, I think it's just like a safety and liability thing. So curfew was like 11 or something. We're like, um, are you going far? So she's like, don't like, bother me like I'm an adult or whatever. So she ended up leaving. And then um, our group would kind of disperse the evening. Um, so that was the first sign of things not going so well. Second sign was actually um, she overslept the next day, no surprise there. Um, so she overslept and she missed, um, because to get to uh, the Auschwitz Birkenau Museum from where we were seeing Warsaw, we had to like walk to the train station, the subway basically, right? And then take it a couple stops. And then we had to get off and get on this other train for a couple, for like an hour or two. And then we had to get on a bus. So it was like several different stops. And the whole point we were getting up this early is because our prop didn't want us to miss any of our connections, which is fair. Um, so we had to leave this individual behind at the first stop because she was late. We all left. Um, but we did because we had a lot of like gap time between the first um, like subway we took and the second train, we were able to wait for her to get there. So she ended up making it. Um, we all had different spots in the train, so while some of us were close together, we weren't necessarily all sitting in the same area beside each other, which is fine. But I happened to be sitting really close to where the professor was with her husband, which is, I was like window seat, and then diagonally across from me, I had um, the professor. And then out of nowhere, the individual we left behind, she came up and she, got really like she was like walking up and down and pacing i could tell something was off um and she walked right up to the professor and this professor she's like an older european lady she's older um you know she does her hair but you know you can tell definitely she's like up there in age um she leans close to her like, gets really close into her face and almost like and grabs her arm like vice like grip and goes like don't you ever fucking do that to me again don't you ever fucking dare and she was, it was like kind of terrifying because it looked like she was going to punch her. Um, and after she made those threats, she kind of let go and like ran off to the back of the train as well. And then at that point, people were like, oh my gosh, I think she's going to go hurt herself. And then, you know, later people were telling me, oh, I, sat, I was sitting beside her and she, her like water bottle smelled like vodka and stuff like that. You know, and those ones are on like rumors. I won't put like too much um, weight in them, but you know, because people were already scared of this person. Um, so her situation didn't really get any better. Um, she had all these micro conflicts with different people on the trip um, to a point where one individual, um, she actually, you know, this is a kind of surprise. She comes from old money. <laughs> her dad makes enough contributions to the university's department um, to actually have a strong voice and influence on how things are run. Um, so she wrote an email back to her dad being like, you know, I don't really feel safe with her on this trip. Um, so he put in a word and um, I think they, like investigations of some sort were like started at that point. So they were going to like look into it. But I think if things had just ended there, nothing major would have happened. But she was in an unstable state and actually didn't really help her own cause. Um, because when we were in Auschwitz-Birkenau. I think these two weeks were quite stressful for everyone because we were 
learning about all the horrors of the Holocaust while living just right across the street from the museum at the hotel. Um, and we were just going daily into the museum um, to hear lectures and to speak with survivors and all of that. So it was like quite an emotionally draining period. Um, and I think she was like affected quite strongly. Um, so during one of our like evening class meetups, she had a bit of a meltdown. I think she, at that point she did have alcohol in her water bottle, it was clear. So she was drinking. Um, and she has, um, she comes from indigenous background. So her people, her family members are, um, have survived generational trauma from all the crap Canada has done to our indigenous population. So she was taking it quite personally and she was connecting a lot of, because we were talking about intergenerational effects of trauma. And, you know, it's, it became very personal for her. Um, but she, like, lashed out. Um, I can't even remember what really triggered her. So she ran back to her room and then while she was there, I think she punched the wall a couple times so the painting fell down. Um, and her roommate who went back to try to console her was a bit, shocked by that as well, right? Um, and then after that, she took off. And granted, for anyone who's ever been to the Auschwitz Birkenau Museum, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, besides the hotel um, and the like small complex that was right across the street where we stayed, there was really nothing in that area. So there was really nowhere she could go, but she booked it in the middle of the night and it was raining and she ran away. And it took us a while to locate her, but she was ended up like sitting in the middle of a road, right? And that was like a pretty dead area because um, there was not a lot of traffic that went through in the evening, um, but it was still scary. It was raining, it was dark, she was sitting in the road and she wasn't willing to move. Um, and then we had to actually have to send, um, I think they called the ambulance and she ended up going to the hospital for, and then some, some people went with her. I think the university decided, okay, she, we're kicking her out of this program, she's clearly not ready, we need to take her back. Um, so they actually sent a program coordinator from the university to Europe to come and intersect and bring her back. But the problem is, I think the way they handled it was they were a bit secretive. They didn't really tell her. They told her, you know, they sort of lied to her and said if she could, she was willing to go to therapy during that time, um, she was, she would be allowed to stay. Um, but actually they were just sort of planning to remove her from the program. Um, so even after the program representative came and like trying to bring her back, like a lot of things happened. Like they lost her. She ended up like missing and you know like we would get texts too because we'd be like oh do you know where she is and we'd be like uh no like did she go missing um and it'd be things like she'll be found in strangers rooms like drunk passed out she took some substance or she would like message us on facebook and be like i'm like so out of it because i just took something i'll be like where are you right? and she actually i think missed at least I think, one flight to the university i booked for her so there's like some money wasted there as well right i think that just on top of everything else that happened soured the mood of the program and all the participants and um instead of a place of learning and deep reflection it became like petty complaints and fights and people wanting to like get out of there right so that was it in a nutshell and i think it does in the core of it all boil down to expectations not being matched from either side expectations of us and expectations of um what the university was supposed to provide for us like in my opinion i feel like it was pretty clear um but i guess it just somehow all these personalities were brought together stars aligned and things imploded right yeah it didn't go well um and i, I just think it was a shame that people weren't able to take the experience for what it was and appreciate the opportunity we were given but that being said, I still made some great friends and we had some good times. <laughs> well, it's the last night in Warsaw and we're going out for a while. Oh, wine. I found a picture it's of it. <laughs> After living for about um, a month like a peasant, mm -hmm. we all decided to treat ourselves. Yes. <laughs> Look at this view. Ooh, you can see the Scream like a banshee Something's hiding in the pantry But I can't find it, so would you please Enchant me Give me a potion For my devotion To the emotion
bread stands all over Poland, so we finally gave in and got one. It's like a fucking rock, man! You can't even bite this shit! <laughs> Rat to the sky, man. I'm not even scared of me. It's our third hostel. We have our own bathroom. We have our own bathroom. And just look how cute and cozy this is. And on top of that, there's a cute little balcony. And we're like right across from an ice cream store.